sit behind a pool noodle. Sit by a pool noodle. Anywhere you like.
having Zoom, you have to wait for the blue light. Good morning. It's so nice to see so many familiar faces after such a long period of time. And uh, let us begin our church service.
Join me in the call for worship. As soon as the light comes up. Yeah. Come, Holy Spirit. 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 We will now sing Wind Upon the Waters, the next hymn. join in the prayer of invocation printed on page okay. five. Generous God, creating and everything, every living thing, source of all food, material and spiritual, nourishing us body and soul, light that leads us, illumining the darkness, fill us with your breath, nourish us with your sustenance, Renew us with your living water and sustain us with your love today and always. Amen. Thank you. 
Loving Grace, we ask your presence with Allison. We're grateful for her, for her safe travels. We're grateful for the ministry that she will offer, that we will offer together as well. Bless, keep, nourish, and sustain her, both now and always. Surround and nourish with grace and with her love. In your name we pray. We continue together in the spirit of prayer. On this day of Pentecost, we pray, come, Spirit. Come and fill us with your love. Open our eyes to see your holy presence within and around us. In the stillness of this sacred space and in the busyness of our streets and trails, in the joys and celebrations of our lives and in the struggles that break our hearts, in shouts of discovery and in the still small voice of love. Our hearts fill with praise for your inspiration and companionship, for the good news of extravagant welcome, for calling and knitting us together as one family in faith, for raising our eyes and spirits to your love, for guiding us along the way, for lifting us when we fall, for encouraging us to share your love freely. You call us home again and again. We lift our voices in praise. In this season of transition, we pray for teachers and students, parents and graduates. We pray for the safety and joy of those attending proms. We pray for workers and businesses, visitors and guests. We pray for the Christian ministry in the national parks, both here and across the country. We pray that in the frenzy of these days, we all might find moments of Sabbath renewal. Compelling spirit, bless your church. 
Inspire us with Christ's vision of shalom. Help us recognize our gifts for ministry and to use them in the service of others. Transform our hearts and minds. Fill us with love that overflows. Remind us that there is no greater calling than to love you with all that we are and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Give us a glimpse of your kingdom emerging around us and drawing us into the new things you're doing in the world. Come, Spirit. Bring wholeness to the sick. Strengthen the weak. Heal the wounded and broken. Give rest to the weary. Shepherd those in recovery. Bring consolation to those who grieve. Rekindle our trust in life beyond death, in love deeper and broader than we can imagine. Inspire us to seek peace, to love our enemies fiercely and set down our weapons, whether of word or steel. Ignite a fire in our bones, a passion for justice that cannot be quenched until all your children are loved until no one is marginalized, exploited, or oppressed, until all may live free in the pursuit of happiness, until the world itself is transformed and renewed. We pray for the healing of creation and the renewal of the face of the land. We pray for those who are thirsty, that they would drink from your fountain of living waters and never thirst again. Pray for the ceasefire in Israel and Gaza and wherever violence threatens. We pray for truth and integrity in our common life, for the wisdom and discernment of those entrusted with difficult decisions, and for beacons of hope shining bright throughout your world. Open our hearts to your spirit until your glory is revealed in relentless love. In communities transformed by justice and compassion, and in the making whole all that is torn asunder. We rest in your embrace, offering the prayers of our hearts, whether in silence or out loud, on our prayer cards or by way of our chat. I'll come around and collect cards if you had some. Pray for all in our congregation in this time of transition for our community. For Dee Dee Whitaker, that her lumpectomy follow-up appointment on Monday would include good news of no lymph node activity and clear margin. Prayer of thanks for Estelle's brother, Jackie's recovery from multiple surgeries. To your love, O oh God, we entrust all for whom we pray, and our prayers, both spoken and unspoken, together praying as Jesus. Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us sing a response. Mm -hmm.
Today's scripture reading is from Ezekiel 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and God brought me out of this, of this, by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. God led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were all dry. God said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, oh, Lord God, you know. Then God said to me, prophecy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you will live. I will say sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh came upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then God said to me, prophecy to the breath, prophecy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as God's commanded, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then God said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophecy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. I will place you on your own soil, and then you should know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The next reading is Acts 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue, native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native languages, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and res residents of Mesopotamia, Egypt, and other parts of Liberia belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, what does this mean? Others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. The, indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. 
then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the reading. Let us pray. Faithful God, both companion and creator, breathe new life into dry bones. Speak new freedom in our lives that we might declare with heart and soul and voice the good news and great hope of your redemption. Amen. Hallelujah. Say that with me. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are gathered together once again, not only in the electronic ways we've been accustomed to, but here in God's house as one family. Let's take a moment to look around, to see each other, to behold, to behold our siblings in Christ. Many we know, some we might not, yet here we are, gathered by God, called beloved by Christ, nurtured and blessed by the Holy Spirit. God has blessed us. God is blessing us right now. And we lift our hearts in thanksgiving and praise. Hallelujah. 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 Before I get started, let me tell you, we're about to do something really exciting. Untried ever in the history of church. Our Zoom and PowerPoint, go Steve. Our Zoom and PowerPoint host, Steve, up to now has been managing things from his living room. But he also really wanted to sing with our church choir for our special music today. So he's just set out for church and he should be here in a couple minutes. Okay, the upper right there where it's blank, that's where Steve would have been a minute ago. After part one of the sermon, we'll sing, and then I'll continue with part two. So I invite you to keep him in prayer as he makes his way over here. Godspeed, Steve. <laughs> we thought it was Pentecost. We got to do something way out on a limb. I said to Steve, you know, I normally like operating with a net, and you know me, you know that's true, but we're like, oh, okay. this is fun. Last summer, during our outdoor worship services, we gathered stones and wrote a word or prayer to represent our prayer during the pandemic and to voice our hope and anticipation of when we would gather together again. We hoped, we hoped this day would come. But we didn't know when, and it's been a long, long time. We said that we would place stones on the windowsills around the sanctuary to remind us of what has sustained us these 15 months. The prayers, the gifts, and the blessings of God, the love of our church family, and the compassion of others. On your way in today, you picked up a stone and placed it near where you're now sitting. And if you didn't, you soon will. I'd like for you to look around and take notice of the stones ringing our sanctuary. There's a bunch over there, like Kathy and Terrence, over here. You were in the back, I'm noticing. Some over here as well. While I read what is written on each one, I'd like for you to think about a time when this word or phrase has held particular meaning for you in these last several months. Inspire. Courage. Community support. True self. Understanding. Hugs of comfort. Embrace. Kindness. 
grow in knowledge and love of God and others. Community and love. Deeper appreciation for and connection with and love for one another. Steadfast love. Love in action. We are family. The sun's warmth. Endurance. Love, peace, truth. Hope, freedom, love. Trust the timing. Unity, family, patience, harmony. People as witnesses to God's love. Perseverance. Democracy. Reminded of God's love. Stay firmly rooted. Continue to love. Sustain us. Bread of heaven. Peace. Togetherness. Continue paying love forward. God's will is done. In the book of Joshua, the fourth chapter, when the Israelites finally crossed the river Jordan into the land of promise, Joshua instructed leaders from each tribe to carry a stone from the river and place them at their camp as reminders of God's power and presence, having brought them over. In the fourth chapter, they re it reads, those 12 stones which they had taken out of the Jordan, Joshua set up in Gilgal, saying, when your children ask, what do these stones mean? Let them know that God has brought us over so that all may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty and so that you may honor God forever. We too will keep these stones as reminders of God's power and presence with us, bringing us over, bringing us through, bringing us together once again. And if someone asks what these stones mean, tell them, we've come this far by faith. We've come this far by grace. We've come this far together. Hallelujah. We sing our praise to the power of God. Precious Lord, who helps us stand, who helps us stand strong when we are weak, who leads us on even today. Let's sing. <laughs>
Our scripture readings today depict the breath of God moving among God's people, to fashion a community out of the dust of despair and the confusion of estrangement. The passage from Ezekiel reminds us of the animating power of the Spirit. The Hebrew word is ruach, meaning both breath and spirit. The power of God to raise God's people from separation to community. The same is true in the passage of Acts, which recounts that Pentecost long ago when the Spirit kindled an awakening that we celebrate today as the birthday of Christ's church. Let's take a few moments to focus on this passage, this feast of Pentecost, the gathering of pilgrims from many nations, the miracles of the Spirit's presence, and on Peter's audacious claim that the prophet's vision of radical inclusivity was beginning to be realized at that very moment. You'll remember that Pentecost, the Feast of Pentecost, refers to the, the Shavuot, the Jewish festival, the Feast of Weeks, the first fruits harvest festival. Initially, initially celebrating the first harvest of grain 50 days after Passover and coming later to celebrate the gift of Torah, God's law. As you can imagine, this was an important time, celebrating God's gift of guidance and relationship and the fruitfulness of the land to which God led them. That's why the disciples were there gathered together to join in this festival. As the reading says, they were all together in one place of one accord. And as one of the three pilgrimage festivals in Judaism, many Jewish pilgrims would travel to Jerusalem for Shavuot to participate in observances in and around the temple. So these pilgrims were the ones who made up the crowd, which heard the commotion around the disciples, people of diverse backgrounds and languages from across the Mediterranean diaspora. In a sense, as hearers and bearers of scripture, we're eavesdropping on this scene as well. Witnessing the compelling mystery of the Spirit's presence, hearing the rush of a mighty wind, seeing divided tongues as of fire, and listening to the disciples' uttering of unknown languages. And the next part, too. It's as though we're sitting among the crowd, hearing and seeing spectacular things which beg for interpretation witnessing this miracle of comprehension, and better yet, this miracle of understanding. When we think of Pentecost, we often conflate the two moments in the passage having to do with language. The first is when the disciples spoke in other languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. And the second is when each person in the crowd hears the disciples speaking about God's deeds of power in their own language. The first was an, a miracle of utterance. The second was one of understanding. But even greater is the cumulative effect, that hearts were open to receive Peter's message and his vision. I mentioned it before. Did you all see the sunset last night? It was this quality of light that is so rare and precious. This, this luminous yellowish orange and then reflected on the underside of all the clouds all around. It, you don't just look at where the sun is setting, but you have to look behind you and see the rest of it as well. It was special. It's something spectacular. It doesn't just startle us or please us not just the ooh and the ah, but something that takes that next step and moves us to remember and receive the presence of God as, as it was back in Pentecost when each heard the disciples speaking about God's deeds of power. The passage begins with these miracles of language and comprehension, but keeps on going funneling us towards Peter's heart-opening message. All this wasn't just a cool show, spiritual fireworks, but it crescendos into Peter's statement of vision and purpose. The vision was this proclamation, and 
Honestly, they just experience an object lesson that the spirit traffics in radical inclusivity. People from all over receiving God's saving words. And the purpose too, rather than an unspecified future time, Peter is saying that time begins now. Here's what God is up to, Peter is saying, starting now. If you were startled by that phrase in verse 17 that says, in the last days, let me try to put your mind at ease. Historically, or basically in the last days is a biblical phrase that means when God's purpose for humanity is fulfilled. It's not referring to a date on the calendar, but instead re references kairos time, spiritual or sacred time. Peter's basically saying all that stuff the prophet wrote long ago about the spirit being poured out on all sorts of people, young and old, men and women, bound and free, that time is now. Or you might even say the time that you've been waiting for begins now. We heard something like this just before in Luke chapter 4, when Jesus as a boy spoke in the temple referencing the prophet Isaiah. The passage reads, on the Sabbath, Jesus stood up in the temple to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Peter is saying essentially the same thing. The time of fulfillment has come. Only this time in reference to the power of the Holy Spirit to use anyone and everyone for God's purposes starting now. Imagine hearing that. Today is the day, and you're invited. No more waiting. No more wondering when or who. It's now, and it's you. This was Peter's message for those gathered at Pentecost long ago, and it's the message for us today as well. A message that has three parts. First, there's a story unfolding of God's redemption of the world. And if you think that you're not part of that story, that you're too old or too young, too flawed or too lost, Peter and God have another thing to say. You, yes, you, are part of God's purposes. Your visions and dreams, your hopes and your passions are the spirit of God writing this story in the pages of humanity. Perka Abbas in the Talmud wrote, do not be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. Do justly now. Love mercy now. Walk humbly now. You are not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to abandon it. That's the first part of this message, one of radical inclusivity. We are the ones God's been waiting for. Second, all this isn't unfolding over the horizon of some nebulous time then, but it's happening now, in spite of what can appear discouraging or disheartening. Those days are these days. Not in the fatalistic end of the world sense, but in the sense that God's spirit is afoot even now, bringing to fruition what was planted at the beginning of time. That's the second part. And finally, Everything that God needed to do has been done. The justice and peace we long for, the reunion and reconciliation we crave, the hope and love, it is finished. It's done. There's nothing more God needs to do. It's already been written, and the lagging typewriter is just catching up. That's what we're witnessing at Pentecost. That's what we're called to join in. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. We already know how the story ends. We've just got to read our lines and do our part. 
Let this message animate the dry bones of our parched spirits. Let the Spirit give us words to tell God's deeds of power and understanding to receive and share them with one another. Let the Spirit touch our hearts and lives like a mighty wind, like tongues of fire. And let the Spirit so move among us that we take up this call to walk with God hand in hand along the path of redemption. Come, Spirit. Our hymn is Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness.
As we take our leave, though much of the road ahead is uncertain, we know some things that are as solid and sure as the ground beneath our feet and the sky above our heads. We know God is love. We know Christ's light endures. We know the Holy Spirit goes with us, found in the space between all things, closer to us than our next breath, binding us to each other, holding us in love until we meet again. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. shine for we go in peace. Amen. Amen.